that's they are very powerful. Um, of course, you you remember that uh, recently we had Louis Dupont Smith, who was the heir to that fortune, uh, was involved in shooting a wrestler, and um, or no, I'm getting mixed up with John. Excuse me, that was John Dupont, who uh, who was. Um, there in Pennsylvania, do you remember that? Yeah, it turned out he was homosexual, and he yes, uh, evidently the, he didn't get the exactly what he wanted out of a relationship with this wrestler, and uh, well, I guess he's in prison now, isn't he? Yeah, and and there's an interesting book that came out about all of that, but uh, if somebody wants to get an example of how powerful they are. Uh, John Dupont is an example. Um, he had the police right in his pockets, and and uh, the the police trained at his uh, estate. Uh, so, uh, in fact, he was not actually uh, qualified to be a policeman, but they even allowed him to go out as a policeman at times, to um, because he wanted to. Hmm. Um, but yeah, you're, you're right. The DuPonts did do that with that book, and they are extremely powerful. Uh, there isn't one, uh, one way to illustrate that is is to call people's attention to all of the items that we use in our everyday life. Every day we use items that the DuPonts and the, the DuPont company manufactures. You can't go through a day without using. Uh, some product that that they have the patent rights to, um, and then of course our whole in military industrial complex, uh, the Duponts had a monopoly in, during several wars on all of the gunpowder that was being made, and hmm. made incredible large sums of money during the wars that we fought. Hmm. Well, let's talk a little bit about Onassis. Uh, now, Aristotle Onassis, of course, married Jacqueline Kennedy yeah. and shocked the whole world uh, at the time. People seem to see him as some kind of a seedy Greek shipping tycoon. And, of course, she was like a, almost like a member of royalty uh, to the uh, public. Uh, but evidently, the Onassis, according to your book, had a lot of connections with the Kennedys even before... Uh, John Kennedy's death. Yes, they, they were uh, uh, co-workers in, in in the underworld, and uh, Aristotle, uh, during World War II, uh, you get a picture of how powerful these people are, that during World War II, uh, Aristotle's ships, and he had several hundred, sailed in every theater uh, of the war, and they uh, applied their merchandise to both the Allies and the Axis, and and all of the shipping fleet was never attacked by either side once, and yet uh, uh, they were flying, a lot of them were flying the Greek flag, and uh, essentially the entire Greek merchant fleet was sunk. Uh, Ships flying the Greek flag were, were sunk, a large share of them in the Mediterranean, but others in other theaters. But, for, but it took the highest collaboration at the highest levels for Onassis's ships to go unscathed throughout the entire Second World War. That shows the power of these people. All right, and let's talk about another one, Russell, the Russell family. Now, there was a Russell who helped to found the Order of Skull and Bones. Yeah. Also known as the Society of Skull and Bones. Is that by accident, you think? No. Uh, the, the Russell family uh, was identified to me by numerous people that have been in the Illuminati as being one of the, the top 13 bloodlines. And uh, when I got into investigating it, like you were re um, 
like you referred to uh, how uh, how this um, General William Huntington Russell had had created this Skull and Bone Society. Well, that Skull and Bone Society is legally incorporated as the Russell Trust, and uh, guess who, who um, has belonged to that? Of course, you know uh, George Bush, and now his son is uh, running for president. Very interesting, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, well, the uh, the Russell family is very uh, uh, tied in with the Taft family, and they've also played a, a very powerful role in American history. Um, but uh, one of the one of the modern day uh, offshoots of the Skull and Bone Society is Wackenhut. And for all of those people that are um, UFO, uh, uh, um, people that are, are very uh, interested in the UFO scene or, or abductees or whatever, um, guess who is uh, guarding a lot of these uh, military bases like Area 51? It's Wackenhut, which was was sort of like the Illuminati's private security force that uh, the Skull and Bone Society set up. What the Wackenhut uh, security, the corporation? Yes. The, well, hmm. yeah, and and Wackenhut stands for several corporations that are interrelated. To be technically accurate, there isn't just one Wackenhut corporation. There's several. Hmm. The name is very curious, Wackenhut. Yeah, it was named after the Wackenhuts, who were skull and boners, who uh, also tied uh, or related to uh, the Russells, um, who started it. Now, you you mentioned the Onassis dynasty in your book or bloodline, the Krupps out of Germany, but there's one out of uh, Red China, or I should say, just Chinese. Maybe you can discuss that briefly. The Lee, L-I, yeah, family. In fact, recently, and I didn't get to see it, there was a movie about Lee Pong. You mentioned him. He was the leader of, of China. Um, that, uh, the, the Lee's pop up in a lot of places. Um, and uh, they've been good friends with, uh, uh, the Lee's have been good friends with these uh, European Illuminati bloodlines for many, many years, maybe centuries, it appears. It appears like uh, the relationship may go all the way back to uh, the days when Marco Polo was opening up the Orient to the Venetian families. Mm. And uh, some of the, uh, the bloodlines of the Illuminati today have uh, have power, uh, have blood that goes back to these powerful Venetian families, and so uh, you've got a long relationship between the Lee family and um, these other powerful families. All right, now let's just say that uh, I was a person who believed what the media says, and you know, and all I had to do was uh, read. Uh, uh, the local newspapers and Newsweek and Time, those kind of rags, and uh, watch uh, the, the CBS, ABC news programs and such. And I saw the Lee family, and I said, Illuminati, oh, come on. Because obviously the communist Mao Zedong and those that took over China, they would have never allowed the capitalist Lee family to continue to operate uh, in Red China after they took over uh, in the late 40s. Would they? What would be your response? <laughs> well, my response would be to, uh, if they were open and everybody is at a different place as to where, where, where they're ready to learn something, but if if somebody was, was at a place where they were willing to learn, I would, uh, I would, give them more than a soundbite answer, I would explain to them how the Illuminati created communism and uh, how the very bloodlines that we're talking about uh, were into 
intimately involved in Russia and how Russia was intimately involved in the creation of communist China and uh, worked with with um, Chinese leaders to bring that government about uh, and how communism is really simply just Illuminism. It's uh, Karl Marx, for instance, uh, was a Satanist and wrote many secret books about Satan. Um, these kind of things are only known by the communist hierarchy and a few pe other people. Uh, then if you go in and look at these Chinese leaders and also the Russian communists, for instance, I have a picture in the asterisk chapter where uh, the Astors went over in the 1930s to Russia, and Stalin hosted them like they were royalty. He rolled out the red carpet. And you would ask yourself, well, why did these capitalists get treated like kings? Why are they given the royal treatment by these communist dictators who run around and act like they're, they're uh, taxi cab drivers? Well, the same thing happened when uh, David Rockefeller went to Red China. The, the Lee family, you know, was right there to roll out the red carpet again. I remember reading, uh, somebody sent me an article from the New York Times, the last time Boris Yeltsin visited America, just a little bitty item, uh, it talked about his itinerary, and it stated that he had also uh, visited New York City where he spent a couple of hours with the Rockefellers yeah. in their uh, private apartment. I thought that was very interesting that Boris Yeltsin, head of uh, Russia, would uh, do that. Uh, there's, of course, a Jewish dynasty that seems building in Russia now. You know, Primakov was recently uh, demoted, uh, evidently after he went head-to-head -head with Borisovsky. A lot of things going on with the Illuminati in Russia. Maybe we'd do a whole program on on that sometime. Let's talk about the Reynolds. A lot of people know about Reynolds wrap, Reynolds aluminum. I guess we only have a couple of minutes here, but tell us just a little bit about the Reynolds. Well, they're a name brand item. And yeah. These Reynolds companies are definitely uh, uh, tied to the uh, Illuminati Reynolds. Um, the Reynolds family uh, connects in with a lot of other families, the Biddles, the Pullmans, the Dukes, and um, uh, a lot of people may be familiar with Doris Duke. She was the richest woman of the world, and um, uh, she, her father was a uh, Buck Duke, and um, the Reynolds have been involved in uh, tobacco. And uh, they've had just enormous power in the South. Well, I tell you, Fritz, we're out of time here. And I, I, boy, I had so many more questions for you. I hope we can do this again to talk about some more of these, especially the Krups over in uh, Germany. I know there was Nazi connections, just incredible things there. I wanted to ask you about the John F. Kennedy assassination, but we're totally out of time. I want to tell you, though, how much I appreciate your writing this book, exposing these things, putting your own self at jeopardy. Thanks, Tim. And then most of all, I, I appreciate the Christian perspective you have in all of your books, and I thank you for that as well. Thank you for being a guest, Fritz Springmeyer, on Power of Prophecy. My pleasure. Thank you. Folks, you know, we expose these things. The Bible tells us to. We're not going to stop doing it. Uh, they may want to take us off the air, but until they do, well... We're going to keep telling the truth, and we're going to keep looking up for the appearance of our Lord Jesus. Well, tune in each week during the same time. Tune in and discover the power of prophecy.